Hey, welcome. Golly, I'm Tom Sinclair, your chief streaming idiot. What can I say? What can I say? What can I say? It has been a day. I wish I wish you were here in the studio with me when I'm getting ready for these shows because sometimes I think that's where the real fun happens, the real magic, you know, the putting all the pieces together, which is, I mean, that's what these shows are about, putting all the pieces together. What are the pieces? How do they work? How do you make different pieces work together? It's like a giant Lego puzzle, you know. If you've ever played with Legos, and I have a five-year-old grandson who has like, you know, 10 zillion Legos, each little Lego kit comes to build a certain thing. Okay, so you got this over here, and it's going to build a bulldozer. And then you've got this one over here, and it's going to build a wave runner. Then you got this one over here. You, you get the idea. But once those things have been built a time or two, they go in a box <laughs> with all the other Legos, and they get all mixed up. And then that's when the real creativity happens, when you put a little bit of this with a little bit of that to form something that's unique. We, we grown-ups get to do the same thing in, in live video production, is we get to take a little bit of this product, some of its best features, and a little bit of that product, some of its best features, and we put them together to get them to do what we want them to do. It may not necessarily be what the designer, the builder, or the creator of the product or software intended, but it's what we want. And that's so cool. That is so fun. I am so excited about today's show because we have got some really cool stuff going on in the studio here. We've got, let me to cut this to this real quickly. This is a, um, a, a Magewell um, XI200X USB uh, capture box and it has two channels of hang on a second let me readjust the cam well must be the cam's dead because it didn't move when I moved it anyway it's got two channels of HD input and each channel will do either HDMI or component now I just found out this box has been discontinued, which means the price may be coming down on it as they sell out the back stock. And it's really cool. It is, it's probably overpriced at the, at the retail price right now. Retail price is $1,159, $1,159 for two ports of HDMI or component capture. And that's, that's what we're running today. This is my, my good old faithful Canon Vixia HF100 handy cam it's a hundred years old and it's it's doing pretty well generally we run it through a black magic intensity pro card an old card not the new extreme card and we're getting we're getting good quality i won't say it's absolutely perfect great quality but it's it's good and it's certainly more than acceptable i didn't notice any difference in putting it through the majorwell card now of course the majorwell card costs five times as much um, for two channels instead of one, so that makes it cost two two and a half times as much for the same for the same shot, but it does not lack. And keep in mind, it is going into the PC USB three, so that teeny weeny little USB three port can support two channels of HD video. Now I took this. Let me see if uh, I hadn't intended to go here, so let me uh, let me see if I can't go here and show you this shot right here. Can I get this shot to pause? Will this shot pause and not advance? I think it probably will advance, but let me see if I can just get it to stop right away when it does advance. So we'll get it there, and we'll back it up just a little bit. Oh, right there. That card, the Magewell XI200X USB, was connected, you can see the little blue cable in the bottom left-hand corner, connected to, and don't tell her I did this, I stole my wife's Asus i3 laptop for this test because I wanted to see what an i3 would do. And so the i3 running vMix HD and connected to the Magewell XI200X USB 
recorded two channels of high definition video. And we'll come back to the, the recording in just a second um, because I want to show that to you for a different reason. But it was the, the USB did not choke that little i3. And so Majewell's got some really cool engineering going into this. They do also, for the you folks that don't want to have two but just need one channel, they've got a dongle. It's the size of the, even smaller than the, the very first little iPhone that ever came out. Um, it's a little aluminum box, plugs USB in one end, plugs HDMI in the other end, and does beautiful video. It retails for $299, so you can get, get a pair of those for $600 um, if you had two USB 3 ports. Now, the, the laptop that I just showed you has one USB 3 port. So you've got a little teeny low-powered laptop that will handle two channels of high-definition video uh, with this major cart. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, I just found out before this broadcast that the cart has been discontinued. It's subject to available stock only. If you are interested in one, um, I will inquire as to whether the prices are beginning to uh, to drop as they get rid of the old stock, or if 11.59 is the the going rate. Um, I can probably help out and bundle that with something else like the VMix product, um, and and make you a deal on the two of them. So we just don't know. Um, Let's see, what did we do there? Somehow we've done something. <laughs> we've pressed a button here. And uh, anyway, uh, somebody says the stream is down for 180. Can you check? Yeah, we'll check it. We'll, we'll pop it back up. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, The, uh, the, the Magewell line is, is a fascinating line. Magewell has done a lot of engineering uh, with the whole concept of video capture, and they are the ones that, uh, okay, say we lost the 720 feed as well. Okay, well, let's stop it and restart it. And see if that helps. What did we do to cause all these problems? Hang on a second. Let's see if we can figure out what we did. We did something here. Somewhere we have done something to cause trouble. And it is not readily evident we've done. Well, let's see if we got it back. How about now? How about now? Brown cow. And if you're watching us live, sorry about this, sometimes this happens. If you're watching us on YouTube, you know, generally we're better than this, but <laughs> you never know. So, somewhere I've, I've clicked a button that I didn't need to click. Okay, looks like we're, we got everything back up and running there. That's good. All right, so we've got, uh, yeah, here's, here's the shot I was trying to show you earlier. That's the box. Um, the box also, in its kind of in, in its pristine state, um, looks like looks like this, and this is from the the Majewell website. Um, get that CPU monitor out of the way there, and you can see two DVI ports, and the DVI ports connect to a dongle, and the dongle contains. Uh, two channels of HDMI, or two channels of component, um, or there's actually a DVI to VGA connector uh, that you can use if you want to pick up VGA as a source somewhere. Um, 
and there are all sorts of other cool options that you can use as well. So that is the Magewell XI200X USB that will run again on an on an i3 laptop. Um, pretty pretty darned amazing. Now today it's running on a um, second generation i7 2600K CPU overclocked to about 3.8 gigahertz. Um, it's recording on a solid state hard drive. We we're recording and and broadcasting and st we're actually streaming two streams so there's a lot going on with it. Um, and the card is not adding anything to speak of to the to the overhead. Um, it's it's really really pretty amazing. Um, let's see if we've got. Uh, and yes, and and Martin is adding that uh, the USB card will also the USB box will also do composite video. Um, if you use just the Lumina Y input. Um, so the composite, the Lumina Y, I believe, is the green one right there, right, Martin? So we've got component, composite, um, VGA, and HDMI as possible inputs into this box. Um, so really pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, that box we are using today in conjunction with um, another toy. <laughs> it's like Christmas around here sometimes. Um, another toy that we have brought in today, and it is, this is not a very good picture of it, but this is a live shot um, of the uh, PTZ Optics uh, PTZ uh, 12X SDI cam. And this is... Um, set up a little shot of it here let's see a little picture in picture and we're using this cam for this shot right here now th let's in fact let me go back one step this is the um, this is the shot right here that we use with our, our where our green screen is keyed out on our Canon Vixia HF 100 so I've tried to set up a, a similar shot um, and tried to adjust the colors at least as quick as much as I could pre-show. This is the um, the PTZ cam um, and I, obviously I need to adjust skin tones a little bit to make those match. I gotta address the the brightness or contrast to pull that up um, but it's a very similar shot. I'll go back back so you can see again this is the Canon shot and this is the uh, PTZ shot. Um, this PTZ shot is also um, actually this PTZ shot and so this shot and then I, I went ahead and added uh, a little picture in picture so that we could see what happens when you use the remote control that comes with this. Um, the um, It's got uh, to, to sleep. that's 10, 10 presets and the ability to do focus and zoom and change all the menu options um, and then manually pan and tilt so I can I can make it pan um, I can make it tilt oops that's a little too far there you see my mic cheating into the shot uh, I can make it zoom not bad Oop, looks like I missed a few spots something you didn't need to see <laughs> and the fun part of course comes when I want to take it and uh, and use the the presets so so we're going to take it to a preset number two which is just a, a little drawback of a shot preset number three preset number four that's the the light uh, that you can see you can see here that little shiny light. Uh, preset number four. Uh, preset number five is just going to take you around the room to the left. Uh, preset number six, 
will take you all the way around the room to the right. You can see it, 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 it almost gets 360 degrees. It's probably like 350 or something like that. I think I may have one or two other presets set. No, I, I guess I don't. Um, so let's take it back to, to that shot and then we'll just take it into that shot. Um, quite a cool little cam. The, um, this is the 12X edition and it's 12X optical zoom. We'll either do um, HDMI, which is what we've got it set up for right now. It will also do SDI, which I had a, a, a PC in here a little bit uh, that had SDI on it and um, it, it did beautifully. It will also connect up as an IP cam and then there's another version of this same camera that will go USB 3. And so that's pretty cool. And then there are also two other uh, two other cams that are 20x zoom. One is the USB 3 with HDMI and, and the other is HDMI with SDI. Um, so they're, they're great for situations where you can't put a camera person or where it's inconvenient or not economical or not, um, you know, just not a, not a great idea. You know, a, somebody's mentioned in the chat, in the chat, a, um, a church, um, a, a conference center, um, you know, any place uh, where, where you would benefit by having a cam, a good quality cam like this, that uh, but you don't have to don't need to have a camera operator. Um, the remote control, this particular remote, will do up to four cameras. But uh, you can. Uh, oops, somebody's reporting that they're having some some problems with one of our feeds. If somebody else notices that, it'll let you know. May may just be may just be them. Um, the um, there is a controller, a hard hardwire controller, that uh, connects to the back of the cam by a serial connection, and so you can hook I think uh, 16 cameras up to that controller. The controller is about $300. This cam, this is the sort of the base cam, the SDI HDMI cam, um, is is $1595 US. And they, the prices go up from there. I think the USB 3 version of this cam is $16.95. And then the SDI two, uh, 20X version is $17.95. And then the uh, 20X version USB 3 is $18.95. So all of them for less than $2,000 in a, in a high-definition video cam. Now, keep in mind, this cam was used... Um, by me um, last week, last weekend, let's see, let's, let's see how much, this is, this is about five minutes worth of video that I took in the sanctuary of my church. And let me just run a little bit of it for you. Uh, this shot is actually the Canon HF100, my main studio cam. Um, and then I'm using that as just sort of a cover shot, and this is the shot right there of the. Uh, let, let's run it back so you can see. That cross is in the in the left side of the of the picture there, um, just below the speaker. Um, and as we move forward into that, you can see that's the the clarity of that shot. That's full zoom at 12x. Uh, it was on a tripod, so as it moves, you'll see a little bit of shake. Uh, that's, that's the altar shot. Um, and then back to the cover shot there. And then I'm trying to move, there we go, over to the right side. So you can see in the, in the right-hand side, below that right-hand speaker, is that little golden angel. And that's what we're zooming on right here. Whoops. Let's go right over to the, the golden angel. There we go, um, and so that's that's pretty clear. That that's pretty clear. Now the lights are, are nothing fancy here. It's just the standard overhead lighting. So an improvement in lighting would be an improvement in clarity, I think. Um, 
and this was just set up quick and dirty on a couple of tripods. Again, the cover shot, that's the, that's the shot showing the front of the altar, the detail right there in the front of the altar. Um, 12X, probably enough for this small sanctuary. I'd say it's probably, what, maybe 60 feet, um, 70 feet from front to back, from back wall to, to back wall. Um, and let's see, we can fast forward here. Or actually, let me, let me go over to, to another video and it'll give you an idea a little bit of the, the sanctuary size. So we're, we're close to the back wall right there. Um, right there is the I-3 that we ran this on, uh, USB 3 to two high definition camera inputs. Um, here I was slowing down a little bit because I was concerned that the camera had adjusted its brightness for the windows there to the left. And yeah, excuse my appearance. I'm, this is a, I was out mowing the grass and then decided to come up and do this. You can see the HF100 right there in the bottom. And then we're coming all the way again back to the back wall. Um, and controlling all of that with the, the handheld controller about the size of a television controller, nothing fancy. But for, for the money and for what you can do with it, it, um, it really looks like it could be the right tool for the job in a lot of cases. Um, these are readily available for shipment and we'll be putting these in the bundle with our um, with vmix and with um, our PCs so if you want a complete church package um, we will have that available. Let's see if I've got some other video here that, yeah, here's one shot. We'll just cut to this shot right there. And this is, uh, I'm a little out of focus because I allowed it to do autofocus. And then I was hoping it would trail me. Actually, the, uh, the pan and tilt and the zoom speeds are adjustable. Um, apparently not adjustable enough in this situation. And got a little intrusion there by the phone. Sorry about that. So you get the feel for what that little cam will do. Pretty impressive. Um, there we go. There's our shot. And um, somebody made a comment just a second ago going back to the uh, HF100 shot and then comparing it to the, the PTZ shot that the HF100 shot just a little bit clearer and that the definition is a little bit, a little bit better. And I think part of that may be that um, I've spent a lot of time getting this guy dialed in for, you know, the colors that I use. I try to use the same color shirt every week. Um, and this is a pretty good indication of my, my skin color. Here you can see it's a little pinker. Uh, the shirt doesn't have quite as much detail in it. And some of that may just be a, um, a tweaks that I, I need to make on the camera. But back in the in the video, um, I was I was pretty impressed with the clarity of the picture. Um, 
let's let's run it back a little bit and right about in here where it focuses on me and come on a little bit further a little bit further a little bit further a little bit further right there um, I thought that was pretty good pretty good clarity right there so lighting may be part of it um, I don't know that I've got the white balance set again definitely one of those things that uh, you're gonna it's gonna take some time to tweak to get it dialed in but the beauty of this camera I think is that it's a it's it's a, a fixed location that you're gonna leave the camera where it is hopefully it'll be in a secure place and uh, you, once you've got your settings set you don't have to tweak them um, the uh, oh I know one thing that I can show you let me see let me bring it up I think it'll be easier to see in this shot is that I can take the cam and um, and I can pop up the menu this is actually the menu uh, for the camera um, is that showing up pretty well uh, for you guys I know sometimes text doesn't always show up real well let's uh, let's try something here yeah that's already on so hopefully that text shows up so that you can uh, you can see and we can we can set the exposure um, currently it's just set to auto that was just a you know quick and dirty work in there we can we can adjust the, the color we can adjust the white balance I think the only thing I did on the white balance was set it to outdoor um, we can set uh, one one push um, the manual adjustment so we can go ahead and set it however we like this is the auto adjustment which I didn't like as well this is the indoor adjustment which I just thought was all washed out and so again quick and dirty just set it for outdoor um, didn't take much time with it uh, the the image adjustment allows me to to adjust the luminance and the contrast um, you know maybe a little bit more contrast or a little less contrast you can see let's just try one click more well, that's not bad it's not not the best we would want uh, we can we can flip it horizontally we can flip it vertically we can put uh, it on black and white um, the point tilt and zoom speeds um, let's see center low speed that's the zoom speed okay noise reduction setup and then restore uh, setup was um, basically how it communicated with the uh, how the menus were what language the menus were in and how it communicated with the controller so there's um, now let's let's compare now that we've tweaked this just a tad this is the shot with the chroma key and this is the the shot from the HF 100 so I've gotten a little bit lighter still skin tone is not quite right um, I mean, I probably would not be using this cam as a studio cam. Um, I mean, I could. I could. I, I'd feel comfortable doing it, but I wouldn't choose it as a studio cam. I think, number one, at $1,600, it's more than I want to spend on a studio cam. But for a specific environment, again, you know, conference, church, uh, I could see this going into uh, uh, for, for basketball. Um, I could see a lot of a lot of cases where this would work for sports. Um, certainly would work in um, anything that would be a you know a public arena kind of thing where you could set up a couple of these, and and then run the whole production by yourself. Um, have your preset shots. You know we're we're coming into uh, the uh, the election year campaigns, and so if you're doing anything with campaigns and a couple of these cams. Um, a couple of these cams would act like four to six cams based on being able to have presets um, and move from shot to shot with a cover shot in between so they you know they can't see the movement of the camera even when even when yeah I, I guess on a, a, a tripod you'd have to anchor the tripod to keep it from uh, from having some jitters in it but uh, it was mostly when it stopped and when it started that it had jitters while it was moving it, it didn't seem to, to do too badly and this is the PTZ uh, optics uh, 12x SDI retail for $15.95 and these are going in our store as well 
So if you're interested in these or anything like these, uh, shoot me an email, uh, tom at easternshorebroadcasting.com, and we will uh, we'll, we'll hook you up with one. Um, I did take a second to take this shot. This is the Canon HF100. And I said, okay, let's take this same shot and let's put the other camera in it. And so this is the PTZ Optics. Um, again, you know, again, tweaking. This is a darker shot, at least darker on me for whatever reason. Well, it was until I, maybe I just need to leave my hand there. <laughs> but uh, this one needs a, a little bit of tweaking and obviously I need to line myself up with it. But not bad, not bad. And a lot of fun to play with, a lot of fun to play with, you know, and getting the presets set up. Um, I did not try this cam um, on my network, and I haven't tried, obviously, didn't, didn't uh, have a controller brought in for that, but I imagine uh, having a joystick would be certainly, certainly a lot easier to use. Um, here on the control, uh, I've got... The, the center circle buttons here is the, the pan and tilt control, uh, and then the zoom is, is a, a button just coming down the side. Um, I've got the ability to go autofocus uh, or manual focus, and then set my presets, and then the, the white buttons across the top are for up to four different cameras that I can have presets in. And one of these controls comes with each camera, so conceivably you could be, um, you know, set up different presets with different controls. So, you know, here I've got, I've got 10 presets for each camera. If I wanted more than that, I'd have another controller and just color code my controller so I knew what, what was what. Anyway, pretty cool stuff, pretty cool stuff. So um, the idea behind this, uh, just to kind of give you a glimpse as to what's going on in this little twisted brain right here, is that I'm thinking of, not I'm thinking of, but I'm, I'm planning for and just on the cusp of offering a series of packages uh, specifically designed for churches, but could, could work for conferences or, or other kind of meeting gathering kind of situations where we have a, a, a starter package and the starter package would start for, I think, $70. Um, and it would include um, the, the the very basics that you would need to get starting in broadcasting, assuming that you had a suitable PC of, at, as we've seen, at least I3 um, capacity, um, and that for seventy dollars you could you could prove the case. You know, don't have you spend less than a hundred bucks to prove to your congregation or to your civic organization or whoever it might be that this is viable. And then, then as you have a budget, um, you can have lots of different ways to do it. You, if you've got, again, if you've got a suitable PC and you want to put in a PCIe card, uh, we can go that route. We can go the dongle route um, to get HDMI. I think you know the, the idea is that you get HD in. Um, and then, you know, again, if you've got suitable PC and suitable cards and you want to put in uh, a PTZ or two, you can do that. And then we'll have the full blown, blown package that will include um, our PC, what, what I think is the right setup for streaming and recording, um, the, uh, the audio and video inputs, and the, 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 um, the video cams. Obviously, this PTC Optics, I think, is, is really passed the test for me and would be the one that we, were, we would use to, to put in that package. And then, um, you know, have packages based on the number of cameras that you want to put in there. So the, the cost really is going to be in the cam a lot. Uh, the PC would remain pretty much the same. same. The capture card, we'd probably use the Magewell line of capture cards. So uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. I'll, I'll make sure you know about that. And, and if you know of a church that's, that's looking at this or is interested in it, um, you know, send them my way or, or drop me a note and I'd be happy to to talk with them. And sometimes folks don't need what they think they need. And um, I'm happy to get them steered onto the right thing. And if it's something else, that's okay too. I, my, my goal is just to help folks. And uh, sometimes the simplest thing for me to do has been to create, uh, design and build PCs that meet their specs. 
uh, because they couldn't find it anywhere else. Whether they looked under every rock or not, I don't know. Um, or situations where somebody had, had taken an off-the-shelf PC and achieved, you know, maybe 50 or 60 percent of, of their goals with it, but really wanted to go to the to the 90 to 100 percent, and that's that's where we're able to do that and help. So I think that's and and it's a lot of fun. I, I love dealing with folks like that. So if I can help anybody that you know, be happy to. Um, coming up next week. We will be reviewing the uh, Magewell um, HDMI USB 3 dongle and taking a good close look at that and have a better report on what's going on with Magewell and their second generation line, their Pro Series. Um, and what else? There was something else ringing, nagging at the edge of my consciousness. It would help if I would write this stuff down. <laughs> Anyway, if not, I'll put it in the show notes. If and if not, it'll it, it will be here next week. Um, one one um, one announcement before we close is that um, the uh, the show before this, that VidBaster guy, will be moving to um, uh, video on demand only, starting uh, in September, which is next week, obviously. Um, and we've had a great run of three years with the show. Fidblaster sort of changed how they're doing things and it's gone to a subscription model. Um, and so we're, we're going to change how we're doing things a little bit and go to a, a video on demand model. It'll be mostly uh, uh, tutorials and uh, demos of features of Vidblaster. And so if you're a Vidblaster follower, look for those in YouTube. They won't be coming live on Wednesdays anymore. Um, it's, it's been a great run and I, I appreciate so many of you supporting that we're going to kind of move our focus to streaming idiots and um, and looking at, at at products and and software and guests that uh, that oh I know we've got that uh, that we've got that live PC deal coming in where it takes four channels of Skype and combines them and then puts them in a green room and so you've got four guests waiting on hold that you can uh, bring into your show so they're going to send us one of those and we're going to be playing around with that. Plus, we'll get some of the Magewell second-gen cards in and play some more with those. If you've got something that you'd like to see us review, um, help us and um, let us know what it is, and, and we'll try to get it. Or if you know somebody that's connected with it and you can help with that, uh, we'd love to see that too. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, don't let me have all the fun. You know, download some of this trial software and try it yourself. See if you can't get a manufacturer or a manufacturer's rep, rep or somebody like that to send you something to play with to see if it works. Um, and if they won't send it to you, maybe they'll send it to me. And then, uh, you know, we can, we can look at it together. It'd be a lot of fun. Boy, I've got more stuff piled up than... I'm just going to have to make some videos about some of the stuff that I've been promising to put on live and I just can't seem to squeeze into the live show. So we'll, we'll work on that some more too. And then we do have one exciting note that uh, we're going to announce in December and I'll let you know more about that as time goes on. Uh, what about the six input Magewell um, SD dongle? Uh, there are two, there's the, the, uh, Magewell SD box that connects USB 3. This is a question in the chat room. There's the USB 3 box that uh, connects. It is, um, I think it's, is it 689? I'll have to, I'll have to check price. Don't quote me on price. It, it's the um, the XI006. Um, Something, something, something. <laughs> but the 006 is the, is the key part. And that's available in a USB 3 model. And then there is the PCIe card, which has the same, same dongle on it that has uh, six composite inputs and actually six uh, stereo audio inputs as well. Um, and the card, I think, is a little cheaper than the box because um, there's just less to it. But um, don't go away after show. I'll look that stuff up and, and tell you exactly what it is. And we'll be putting those, the Magewell line we'll be putting in our store as well. Um, the idea with the store is, you know, 
I want you to have products that, that I think are good and that I've tested and that if you've got a question about, I can answer. And so I'm only going to put stuff in the store that I feel confident about. Um, and when I was starting out in this, I, I wished there was somebody there that could have answered the questions that I had that I answered by trial and error. And, um, you know, I've got boxes of, sitting over there of four-port capture cards that I've tried that were basically designed for, uh, a lot of them were designed for security cameras. And they, you know, they kind of worked, but they didn't really work. And uh, I wish I'd had somebody to tell me, no, don't, don't, don't waste your time and your money with those. E spend your money, your eBay money somewhere else. Um, but uh, so if you've got a question about a product um, and you haven't heard me talk about it, it may have been because I've tried it and tested it and it was eh. so uh, I don't always talk about my blacklist, but I have one anyway. So I'm, I'm rambling now. So obviously it's time to close out. But I, I do thank you for taking the time um, to hang out with me today. It's been a lot of fun. Um, Actually, I want to I want to go back to uh, I want to go back to this shot right here. There we go, because my 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 closing is queued up to this shot. But um, thank you for tuning in. Catch us on YouTube if you haven't sub subscribed on YouTube. Please do. Uh, we will be live next Wednesday at three o'clock Eastern, eight o'clock in London. I think five o'clock on Thursday morning in Australia for Streaming Idiots. So, see you then. Take care, and keep on streaming.